book lovers, my name is Zenium and welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you my July wrap up. I had such an amazing reading month in the month of July. I don't remember the last time that I read this many books in a month. I have eight books to talk about today so I'm just gonna jump right on into it so that this video is not too long. The first book that I managed to finish in the month of July was of course A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. If you don't know but I'm pretty sure that you do, this is the third book in Sarah J Maas's A Court of Thorns and Roses series and this is the third and final book in Farrah's story. The following books will be following different characters. I'm not gonna say too much about this because I already have a book talk up for this book so I'll leave that link down below if you want to hear more of my thoughts. Let's just say that I was not entirely impressed. I gave it three out of five stars and I do have to say that after A Court of Mist and Fury this could have been way better considering how good A Court of Mist and Fury was. The next book that I read in the month of July is actually one of my newest favorites and that is Saints and Misfits by S.K. Addy. I loved this book. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and this was one of my most anticipated releases for the summer and I'm so happy that it did not disappoint. This book follows Jenna Yusuf who is a 15 year old Muslim American half Egyptian half Indian teen. She's obsessed with the author Flannery O'Connor. She loves photography. She's working on a graphic novel. I felt I loved that she she had like hobbies and things like that that a lot of people could probably relate to. Throughout this book you follow Jenna as she goes through two major issues in her life. The first is she's crushing on this boy named Jeremy. He's not Muslim and she is and not just that but Muslims don't really date and so she tries to come to terms with her feelings for him, what she's going to be doing about that relationship, if she would even get into a relationship with him. The second issue that we have Jenna dealing with is a person in her mosque who is thought of as very like religious and pious and like a good person has actually attempted to rape her. So because of that there I do want to say that there is a trigger warning for sexual assault in this book and because this person is always around because of his like presence in her mosque and how he is her best friend's cousin it's very hard for her to deal with this and I really like that it addressed that issue because it's a very important topic and I love that this novel dealt with it. So like I said before I gave this book five out of five stars. I inhale read this book. I absolutely love this book. I was laughing through a lot of this book because even though it does deal with kind of heavy topics it was still lighthearted at times and throughout a lot of the book it did maintain a lighthearted tone. I loved the characters in this book. I love the main character of this book and I am in love with her older brother and I really want a novel about him specifically because he just was so much fun to read about and I loved the dynamic between her and her older brother. I really just loved that this book showed what Islam is all about and how Muslim like lives their lives and that we're actually just like normal people just like anybody else who do a lot of the same exact things and at the same time it wasn't like preaching the religion out at you so I really 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 enjoyed that. I did have one little problem with this book and it's the way that Jenna dealt with her hijab which is if you don't know the headscarf that Muslim women wear. I do plan on doing a book talk for this book so I will definitely go more into depth about that particular issue that I had with this book in there but what I just want to say about that is I didn't like that we didn't really get that much resolution with that particular plot point in this book and that was my main problem with it. But other than that, I very, very, very much recommend this book. Please go pick up Saints and Misfits if you have not already. It is such a great book and it's definitely one to read during the summer. Then I read another one of my absolute favorite books of like ever like this year all time I just I love this book so 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 much it's War Cross by Marie Lu this book comes out on September 12th 2017 I'm in love with this book like you don't understand I'm so 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 in love with this book so first I'm going to describe the world in this book so in this book we have this huge video game called War Cross that Hideo Tanaka has created at the age of 13 so he's a brilliant mastermind and millions of people are using this game it's like a virtual reality kind of game you put on these glasses and you basically play in this game. It kind of gave me Ready Player One feels but it's so different from that in so many ways. Because of how intensely popular this game is in this world, there's this Warcross tournament that happens every single year. Basically like the best Warcross players come together and they play this Warcross tournament that everybody is watching. So our main character is named Emeka Chen. She is around 18 years old. She lives in New York. She's a bounty hunter and she's a very talented hacker. However, because of her record, she can't really get a really great job. She has trouble paying her rent. She's about to be homeless because she can't pay her rent and while she's watching the tournament for Warcross she hacks into the game to try and claim a valuable item so that she could pay her rent and she ends up getting caught and she thinks that that's it like her life is over but the next day Hideo Tanaka the creator of Warcross 
calls her, offers her a plane ride to Tokyo on his private jet so that he can offer her a job to be in the Warcross tournament and try to find this hacker that he's trying to track because this hacker is changing the codes in the actual Warcross game. So while we do start off in New York in this book, we end up in Tokyo and it was just such a great book. Like I've read the Legend Trilogy by Marie Lu. I have not read her other trilogy, The Young Elites, but I am definitely planning to. I do have the first book. This one is definitely my favorite of Marie Lu's work that I've read so far. Far. I loved the characters in this book. I loved the relationships in this book. I loved the plot of this book and the writing is just so good. Like it's just so easy to read. Like I just could not stop reading this book. It was so good and every time I had to put it down I was upset. Like I didn't want to leave the house. I was like why? Why do I have to stop reading this book? It was just that good. It also brings up a really really great discussion about privacy. I cannot wait for book two. I can't believe I have to wait for a title, a book cover a synopsis and then for the actual book to come out and this book hasn't even come out yet like I'm obsessed and dying for the second book and this book hasn't even come out yet so definitely 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 if Warcross has grabbed your attention I very highly suggest that you pick it up because I absolutely love this book and I can't stop raving about it like five out of five stars for sure. The next book that I have to talk about is Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, and a whole bunch of other people Maureen Johnson, Robin Westerman. Okay this is a bind up of 10 short stories about Simon Lewis from the The Mortal Instrument series, also by Cassandra Clare. A lot of people say to read this bind up before Lady Midnight, and I very much agree. I did not read this before Lady Midnight the first time I read Lady Midnight. So definitely, definitely, I would highly suggest that you read this before Lady Midnight because what happens in Lady Midnight will have a much greater impact on you if you have read this book. Even if you've already read Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows, I would still highly recommend that you read this book because it does shed a lot of light on other shadow hunters that I found to be really interesting and I really enjoyed reading. If you're someone who loves, just loves the Shadowhunter world, then definitely, definitely pick this book up. Some stories were obviously better than others, so I gave it 4 out of 5 stars, but I did still really enjoy it. And overall, I would highly recommend this bind up over her other bind up, The Bane Chronicles, which follows Magnus Bane's character. So definitely pick this book up if you have not had the chance to already. Then, of course, I had to reread Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare in anticipation of reading Lord of Shadows because I still had not read Lord of Shadows at this point. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. If you don't know, I'd be surprised, but this is the first book in Cassandra Clare's The Dark Artists trilogy. This is the first book. I just said that. I loved it. These characters from this series are definitely my favorite out of all of Cassandra Clare's characters. I love Emma so much as a protagonist, more than I liked Clary, which was I did not like her at all. And then Tessa, who I kind of liked. But Emma, I absolutely love. And yes, you kind of do have to read all of Cassandra Clare's books to read this one. I would highly, highly recommend it. And like I said, highly recommend reading Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy before you get to this one as well. Then, of course, I read Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. I gave this book four out of five stars. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I gave Lady Midnight five out of five stars. I definitely enjoy Lady Midnight significantly more than I enjoyed Lord of Shadows, mainly because I felt like Lord of Shadows was a filler book, which is not a bad thing when it comes to Cassandra Clare because she does use those to really develop her characters and her relationships and the story and the plot. However, for a filler book, it was a little too long for me. So that's where I kind of was annoyed because I felt like I was reading and reading and reading and it was just a lot of filler. It felt like a lot of setup for book three, so I do believe that book three is going to be really epic and really amazing because I have full faith in Cassandra Clare. But because of its length and the fact that I didn't feel like much happened or we didn't really learn that much or like the plot didn't really progress that much, I had to give it four out of five stars. I do have to say that this book left me broken. I kind of just like closed the book and I was like, that did not just happen. I cannot wait until 2019 for Queen of Air and Dark. I can't wrap my head around it. I just want Queen of Air and Darkness right now. I want my questions answered. I want to know everything. Like, I just love how beautifully Cassandra Clare like weaves all these stories together and I just I love it so much and I most likely will be doing a book talk for this book too so keep a lookout for that. The second to last book that I read in the month of July was Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. I originally gave this book 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads however it's more like a 3.5 on the lower side scale. I would say I'm giving it like a 70 to 75% maybe closer to 70 to 80% is how I 
I'd rate this book. So this book follows Mariko, our main character, who is set up on this arranged marriage to the Emperor's son, and she's on her way to the Imperial Palace when her group gets attacked by the Black Clan, so she decides to dress up as a boy. She's the only survivor. She knows that they were sent out to kill her, and she decides to dress up as a boy and infiltrate the Black Clan so that she could find out why they wanted to kill her and all of that. This book is very much inspired by Japanese culture, which I really, really enjoyed. I loved Renee Adi's writing, and I loved the plot and the female empowerment aspect of this book. However, I was not a fan of these characters at all. Like, at the end of the book, none of the characters really tugged at my heart, which I was upset about because if you guys don't know, Renee Audier has also written The Wrath of the Dawn, which is one of my top favorite books of all time. And a huge reason why I enjoyed The Wrath of the Dawn was because of the characters in The Wrath of the Dawn. So I was expecting to at least love the characters in this book, even if I didn't entirely love the book itself. But I really did not like these characters. Like the main character kept being described as smart. Like literally in the synopsis, it says that never mind her cunning which rivals that of her twin brother she has no cunning i'm not even joking like she has no cunning i did not feel it i was not shown this intelligent mind of hers and i was really disappointed by that the romance in this book came pretty much out of nowhere and the fantasy magic elements were not explained well at all. Now, in The Wrath of the Dawn, this kind of same thing happened with the magic fantasy elements. However, in The Wrath of the Dawn, it was a subplot, but it wasn't a main plot. Like, it didn't ex explain a huge part of the story. In this book, magic is a huge part of the story, and I did not understand how it was working. I do not understand how it's happening, and for that reason, I was really disappointed by that, because I was hoping that it would be a little bit more fleshed out. However, I do really want to continue on with this duology, because I do believe it's going to be a duology. I want to know what's going to happen, because like I said, the plot really intrigues me, and maybe more of the magic elements are going to be explained. I love Renee Audio's writing. She's definitely one of my newest favorite authors, even if I wasn't that crazy about this book because The Run in the Dawn is just such an amazing book and I do have faith that she will be writing even more books in the future that are just going to be as amazing as The Wrath in the Dawn. If you have not read anything by Renee Adier though, start with this one so maybe your expectations won't be that high because maybe my expectations were way too high because I had read The Wrath in the Dawn and I just thought that was absolutely amazing and then maybe read The Wrath in the Dawn. So I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars and I might be doing a book talk but I'm not sure so definitely let me know if you guys would like to see a more in-depth book talk on this book. And the last book that I read in the month of July was an arc of Mean Girls by Michael Astell based on the screenplay by Tina Fey. I was about to say Tiffany. Her name is not Tiffany. I ended up giving this book 4 out of 5 stars. Basically, it's Mean Girls in a novel form. Same exact dialogue, same exact narration. There's different points of view from most of the characters, so you do get that. And obviously, like, more character thoughts than are in the movie, but otherwise, like, it's basically the same thing. It really is based on the screenplay by Tina Fey. And I immediately watched the movie after this because I did read this for the binary Bibliothon and one of the challenges was to read a book to movie adaptation. This isn't really a book to movie adaptation because the movie already existed but I still used it anyways and I did really enjoy it. Like I read it really quickly. It's relatively short. This book comes out September 12th. If you like Mean Girls you'll like this book. If you want a quick, fun, easy read you'll like this book like that's all that I have to say. It wasn't amazing or anything but I really enjoyed it because of like Mean Girls. So those are all the books that I read in the month of July. My favorites were definitely Warcross and Saints and Misfits. Definitely my favorite books of the month. Let me know what your favorite book of the month was. Let me know if you read any of the books that I read and what you thought of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye!